So if we go to, how do I get to Carolyn's backs? Okay, now her backs are fairly similar. So this should actually be pretty easy. Now, right off the back on this number eight, I don't care for the back at all. Whereas the front is fabulous. So if you saw, let me see if I can zoom in here. Yeah. If you saw this dress on Pinterest, you would go, oh, that's a terrible dress. Or at least I would. It doesn't fit her well. It's not flattering. Whereas the front was fabulous. Okay, so this is another reason I want you all to start looking at things separately. So whenever you are, let's say you make your own costumes or you are taking inspiration ideas to your dressmaker, you want to be able to look at the front and back separately. One, because you want to be able to do that skillfully and two, because you don't ever, ever, ever want to duplicate someone else's dress. And I mean, never, ever, ever. <laughs> So in learning the skills to choose specific elements from each dress and to be able to um, um, learn to say, okay, well, this front neckline looks good on me and this back neckline looks good on me. Odds are good. Whatever your inspiration dress is does not have both front and back necklines that appeal to you. So therefore, if you can choose a front neckline from one inspiration dress and a back neckline off of a, an evening gown that you have hanging in your closet, then you can help create your own custom sketch that one, makes it look best on your body shape and size or your clients. And you can then also not copy your inspiration dress. Okay, does that make sense? We've ruled out number eight. So let's look at number eight and number one, which are very similar back, back lines, right? The only difference is really is that number eight on this blue dress is low enough that someone thought it was a good idea to put a horizontal strap across the back. Not such a good idea because even on really thin, lean people, you still have skin gushing over. So those of us who are fleshier, then you have fat or flesh gushing over the strap, which emphasizes fleshiness, as opposed to emphasizing her really beautiful back and lovely skin. So for Carolyn, number one, which is a slightly higher back, is much, much better because it can stand alone. She doesn't need this extra strap. Whether or not she needs the extra strap, um, truthfully, Carolyn, if you did make this dress and you have the option to change it, I would run some flesh colored elastics where it connects to the halter top, run down to the armpit instead. And that way it gives you bust support, which you need without creating this crease across the back. Because you'll notice even on this um, leaner lady in the back, the strap is really very obvious still. And I don't know if it's, um, creating, yeah, there is gush, but I think the, show, the strap is perhaps not the right color either. So if you're doing straps, try to make it be part of the dress as opposed to an, oh my gosh, I have to keep my boobs still. <laughs> so try to make it look attractive. Here, you can see how the sleeves on what was a very perfectly straight across on the previous dress, how they angle up. Whenever her arms are up and dance position or over her head, they're going to look very much like number five. So in number six, I like number six a lot. I think I actually prefer, because these two backs are pretty similar in shape, um, the higher back is probably slightly better. Now in an ideal world, you would have three to four necklines that are your fabulous go-tos all the time. And then you would have one or two backups that you could wear if the rest of the dress was fabulous or if the blouse, you know, like the street blouse was a perfect color for you. So as I'm saying this and I say, here's my favorite, that doesn't mean that's the only neckline you all should ever wear. It's just that you want to start choosing your best ones so that you have a premise on how to shop, whether it's for your street clothes or for your dance or skate costumes. You always want to have, you wanna know where to start so that you're not overwhelmed with this seemingly endless list of choices. Again, fronts and backs are not 
to be viewed together for our purposes because in over here i didn't like this front at all i'm like this is really terrible but the back is actually really pretty interesting so then from a design perspective it comes down to how are you going to connect the back that you like to the front that you like that's actually easy if you actually know what works. So this is a really a pretty good shape on her. I don't mind the straight across on her because her hips and her balance, she's between her waist and her hips, she has quite a lot of difference. She has a long stride. And so this straight across with the laces work on her. It would not look good on someone who has a very short stride because it would just make the stride look shorter, kind of like over here where it made her short bodice look even shorter. So this is a really fascinating exercise. Um, I like the squared off. Um, I like these little straight lines and the squares. Reason is um, it's feminine. It's really, uh, it looks like a summer dress to me, but that doesn't do us any good as far as learning the why of a design. So curiously, the squareness on her creates the same sort of feminine feel that um, the red dress with all the ruching around the collar did. It softens her physical body and, you know, like her, her bone structure, it sort of softens it and creates this columnar look, which is very slimming and elongating. So yeah, great exercise. Now for me, if I guess if I come back and pair them together, if I liked number one, and let's say that's my favorite neckline, if maybe number one, number six, and number eight are my favorite necklines overall, then it would be interesting to come in and coordinate it with the back of number four, the back of number seven, and maybe the back of number one or number six. And then not think of them as a unit. It's like kind of like when we played paper dolls, which we'll do later on in the challenge. <laughs> but yeah, so you have when you can separate them, you can have a whole new way of looking at it. Like Olive in the Latin challenge last year, she said uh, she made these fabulous posts. And I don't know if Olive's in this challenge or not. I need to check on her. And she said one of her, her little daily post things, ha. Huh, she says, doing the paper dolls, which we'll do on our last day of the main design challenge, she says, five tops and five bottoms makes 25 options. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and then when you do that, one, you have like so many cool ideas, but you don't get overwhelmed with them because you've already, I've already taught you how to narrow it down and choose what works on you. And this is true for street dresses and I mean, evening gowns, street dresses, wedding dresses, your dance, your skate costumes, anything like that. This whole process works the same ladies. It really does. Or John Chapman, no, <laughs> teasing. <laughs> it, work, it works the same, it, it really does. When you understand your body and when you have narrowed it down to these handful of things that work on you, then guess what? If you have four or five front necklines that you know look fabulous on you, and then you've narrowed down to eight or 12 colors that look good on you, and I'll um, talk about colors either tomorrow or Wednesday, then guess what? You have this whole combination of amazing stuff that you don't have to think about. So whenever you go shopping, whether you're trying to find fabrics for to make a dress or you're going to buy just a regular street top or you're going to buy a dress, a dance dress or a street dress off the rack, you can automatically rule out so many options because you know what looks good on you. And instead of having 20 dresses and going, oh my gosh, then you can go, no, 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 maybe, no, 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 oh gosh, no. Okay, yeah, no, no, no. And you can take those 20 dresses and narrow it down to three or four. And odds are good when you try on those three or four, they're gonna work because you will have done the science behind it. You will have narrowed down what works on you. And 
then once you really truly know what there is, what you're looking at, then you can design around that like hotcakes. It's, it makes such a world of difference. So every step along the way, ladies, we are shedding light on who we are and, and not who we are emotionally or psychologically. I'm shedding light on who you are physically because if we can just look at ourselves just like scientists would or just like um, someone analyzing, someone very detached from like a doctor or a physician, if they, you know, when they look at us, they just see, you know, hair skin, you know, they see all these technical terms. They don't see the nonsense that runs in our head all the time. And so what I, what I, what my goal is in every one of these classes is to teach you to see yourself like a physician would or like a scientist would so that you can ignore the garbage that we tell ourselves all the time so that you can really see who you are physically. And that's how you just create genius designs because then you know, you know what's there. You know the ingredients in the cake. And then you can take all those ingredients in the cake and make this cake and that cake and that cake and that cake that are all equally good. <laughs> Instead of going, well, I don't know what the hell the ingredients are. Let's just try that. And then it turns out terrible. <laughs> and we don't want any more terrible cakes, right? We want really good cakes. We want really great designs for ourselves because awareness sheds light. And light lets us make wise choices because then we know it's all in the knowing.